we'll set up the deep connectivity between our data center and AWS cloud. Um, after which we'll try to connect from our local terminal uh, to an EC2 instance that's running within the private subnet. So let's let's see the steps that's actually involved in doing that. To get started, the first thing that you would need is Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you have version two, three, or four, that should be fine. And you can go to Ubuntu.com to download the Ubuntu server for Raspberry Pi. Um, the one that I'm actually going to download now is Ubuntu 18.4, and I'm going to know the 64-bit version. So let's click on it and wait for it to quickly download. So now the image is actually downloaded. Uh, we have to next burn it into our SD card and load it into our Raspberry Pi. Um, so let's get going. Um, for that, you will need a Win32 disk imager. Um, so all you would do is you would choose your image file that you've downloaded and choose the drive where you actually want to burn the image. Let's give it a few minutes for it to burn and let's continue from there. Now the image is actually burned successfully into the SD card. Uh, it's good for it to be moved into Raspberry Pi that I have here. Um, let me connect uh, the SD card in there and um, I'll try to uh, SSH in. So once that's complete, next install uh, strong swine. So the version that we'll be installing is 5.6.2 um, with this. Let's wait for it to complete. That's good, so I think it's complete. Now let's take a backup of configuration files that exist in EDC. Let's log into our AWS console and create the VPN. We need to uh, connect, go to our VPC service. And in that, if you see, um, you'll have a default VPC that comes along with your account. Uh, in our case, uh, we want to create a new VPC with a different set of blocks. Let's call it custom VPC. And I'm going to keep the serial range as 10.0.0 slash uh, 16. You can leave the remaining settings as is. And there we go. So a new VPC got created. Let's create a private subnet in here. Choose the new VPC that you created. And Let's set the serial range for that to be as 24, 1.24. And that'll give us uh, 251 IP addresses for this new CDO block uh, or the subnet that we have created. Now, if you notice, um, we need to be uh, creating uh, Two different components. Uh, the first thing that you have to create is something called customer gateway. And to do that, uh, let's call it, um, you know, um, my customer gateway. This is going to be uh, your IP address. This is going to be representing your IP address that uh, uh, that exists for your corporate data center in case in this case I'm just going to find my public IP address 
that I am connected with. Can leave the other settings as is and let's create a customer gateway in here so this gets our customer gateway created next let's actually create a virtual private gateway so this virtual private gateway will have to be uh, triggered to your VPC um, This is the new custom VPC that we created. So we're going to attach it to that. Once we do that, we have to set up a site to site VPN connection. And this is what, so let's wait for it to finish attaching here. Um, it's attached. So now let's actually set up the VPN connection. Uh, so what we did earlier was we created the customer gateway. That's a representation of the uh, connectivity on your uh, network, on your corporate network or your on-prem network. And the virtual private gateway that's connected to your uh, VPC. Now we are going to be establishing or creating the VPN connection as such in this step over here. So let's go and create that. Let's call it my VPN. And we're going to be using the virtual private gateway that we created and for the customer gateway we're going to be choosing my customer gateway IP address that I uh, that I actually customer gateway that I set up with my public IP address uh, once that is done I'm going to be leaving this as uh, static and the IP address prefix this will be your um, seeded range for your on-prem network. In my case, it's 198.1. Let me just confirm that. 192.168. And it's going to be IPv4. And I'm going to leave all these uh, options as is. Um, so let's go and create the VPN connection. Once that is done, um, you'll see it's uh, getting created. Um, what we can go and do in the meantime is we can download the configuration file in here. Uh, in our case, we'll be using uh, strong swap. So here it shows Ubuntu 16.04 and Strong SWAN 5.5.1. That's because uh, that's the one that uh, it has been tested against, I believe. Um, in our case, we are with version Ubuntu 18.4 uh, and Strong SWAN is 5.6. Uh, but that should be fine. Let's go and download it. So here we have the uh, instructions, which is uh, pretty much straightforward. Um, I'll, I'll give a brief of what I'm actually going to be doing here. Um, once you download this particular file, all I'm going to be doing is uh, following these steps that comes out of this. Um, it could be uh, it could be different based on the time when you're going to be downloading this particular file. Uh, if AWS updates the instructions, probably you'll have a different set. So. Uh, not to go too deep into each of these uh, instructions line by line. Um, I'm going to be just following the instructions in here, step one, two, three, and um, till four. Um, then I'm going to actually use the, uh, I'm not going to be doing any manual configuration, so I'm going to step, uh, skipping uh, step number five. Um, so let me actually finish that and I'll resume back. The list of steps that we obtained from AWS uh, have been completed and um, one thing that you must um, make note of is uh, if you are actually going to be using the script 
that they provide um, to check the status of, uh, uh, you know, whether the tunnel is up or down. Um, when you create the particular script, you may have to replace the cedar um, value for your VPC in, as a, one of the parameters in here. Um, so apart from that, um, you know, um, the configuration that we intended to do so from the instructions provided are completed over here. Now let's also go back to our console and uh, check the status of uh, VPC. So it shows uh, the tunnel details as still it's, um, you know, it has created both the tunnels in here and it's the status actually shows to be down. We will have to start our uh, service on Ubuntu uh, to start talking to and to establish connection with this tunnel in here. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and run some commands uh, to check the status of the service that it's currently running and restart the IPsec service. That looks good. Just make sure it gets started every time we restart. That's enabled. Now, let's go ahead and restart the IPsec uh, service. And this should actually get the um, connection getting established with the new configuration that we set up using tunnel one and tunnel two as you can see here it shows tunnel one established and tunnel two established as well so let's give it a few minutes and go back to the console and check for if, if there is any update to this status in here this should change to up uh, shortly let's wait for that so now uh, refreshing this page actually shows uh, both the tunnel status have been updated to being up, which confirms that a successful tunnel connection has been established between our on-prem um, and uh, VPC uh, that we have in AWS. Now, the next step would be to create an EC2 instance inside the private subnet and try to establish connection from your local network without having to create a public IP address for that EC2 instance. Uh, which means that you're connecting two VPN tunnel directly into the EC2 instance that's running inside your private uh, subnet inside your VPC. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is the VPC CDA range, right? So I'm going to add a route in my um, on a local machine to say uh, using PowerShell to say that if any request actually comes to 10.0.0 match to this um, block. It should be uh, forwarded to my IP address that I have for uh, my local IP address for the gateway, uh, which is the Raspberry Pi's IP address. So let's copy that. And uh, I just want to confirm once more uh, before I run that command. Uh, load, yeah, that's IP address 68.122. Uh, so let's run a PowerShell command in here and you may have run that as an administrator if you're on Windows. Uh, so let's run that command in here and that's done. So now let's go and launch an EC2 instance uh, within our private subnet. I'm going to choose the default um, Amazon AMI in here um, and keep mostly regular settings or the default settings that I get for that. Um, we want to choose a custom VPC and the private subnet that we created in here. It will not be assigning a public IP address because it's in the private subnet, no IGW connected to it. Um, let's go and add the storage uh, and tags. When it comes to security group, um, as you know, we will be connecting from our local network. So uh, the CDA range for that is 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Uh, we, we want to be SSHing from there and also ICMP for us to be able to ping and check whether the connectivity is there. Now let's uh, 
launch this and I have a lot key paraphrase in here uh, so we'll use that one and uh, let's wait for uh, the EC2 instance to spin up. Now let's go to VPC and um, in here within subnet if you see uh, for the private subnet that we created there is a route table in here. Um, we need to actually add the route for uh, our on-prem or the corporate data centers uh, CDA range in here and say that the traffic has to go through the virtual private gateway that we created. Uh, so let's go and uh, open this route table in here and add that association to it. So that's 192, 168, 16. And we want to choose the VGW in here, virtual private gateway, um, and save route. So now the route table looks good. Um, so let's see if the EC2 instance are actually spun up. And uh, get its IP address it's still initializing. Let's give it a few minutes. Uh, since I've got the uh, name of the machine, let me just copy this, which I'll be using to connect to the instance. So now let's try connecting to the EC2 instance by SSH. Uh, load the EC2 instance and choose connect. And here we go. So we are able to connect to it by VPN. So from our Windows machine, that's in our local network, we are connecting to the EC2 instance that's running within a private subnet inside our VPC um, through the VPN.